Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for uh, this day. We ask that you would take our old understanding and add new understanding to it to, uh, to transform our minds to a heavenly mindset of honesty. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Uh, our scripture for today is found in 1 John. Yes, we're going back to 1 John chapter 4, and today we're dealing with verse 20 and 21. That's 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21, the English Standard Version. It reads, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, Whosoever loves God must also love his brother. Amen. Our subject for today is perfected love builds honesty. Last week, uh, the subject was perfected love builds uh, confidence. And today, perfected love builds honesty. And we still have uh, joyful obedience and uh victory to deal with in the weeks to come. Next Sunday, we'll take a pause for Resurrection Sunday uh, sermon. But uh, let's, let's go with today's uh, perfected love builds honesty. When God, God's love is being perfected in us, we are growing in that love, and then that uh, growth will show in confidence, honesty, joyful obedience, and victory. God's love will show in our lives. People usually get offended anytime their honesty is questioned. And, but I want to share a, uh, a warm-hearted uh, story that I read uh, uh, in the past somewhere uh, that hopefully will offer good insight that will strengthen our honesty or integrity. There was an American Indian who uh, was visiting his white neighbors, and he asked for a little tobacco. And one of them, uh, who had some loose tobacco in his pocket, gave the Indian a handful. On the next day, the Native American came back saying uh, he had found a quarter among the tobacco. And after being told that he could keep the quarter, he replied, pointing to his breast. He says, I got a good man and a bad man in here. And the good man says, it is not mine. I must return it to the owner. The bad man says, why? He gave it to you and it's yours now. The good man says, uh, that's not right. The tobacco is yours, not the money. But the bad man says, never mind. You got it, go buy some drink. Uh, the good man says, no, no, you must not do that. So I don't know what to do. And I think uh, to go to sleep. But the good man and the bad man are talking all night and troubling me. And now I bring the money back and I feel good. When we are honest, we will feel good about our choices in life. Now let's deal with the text for a few minutes. Verse 20 uh, starts with the statement, if a man says. This important phrase has occurred several times, and each time it shows up uh, that there is a warning against pretending. Fear, and pretense usually go together. In fact, they were born together when the first man and woman sinned. No sooner did Adam and Eve uh, sense their guilt than they tried to hide from God and cover their nakedness. But neither their covering nor their excuses could hide them from God's all-seeing eyes. Adam finally had to admit 
I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid. That's Genesis chapter three, verse 10. But when our hearts are confident towards God, there is no need for us to pretend either to God or to other people. Think about how often we try to cover our flaws with clothes, for instance. The Holy Spirit gave me a, a, an excellent uh, uh, example from my past. Uh, when I was a kid or teenager, played uh, what was called Pony League Baseball, and there was a guy named Sam uh, that played with us. He was a pitcher, and uh, he was left-handed. He could throw a left-hand curve, if you are a right-hand pitcher, it would look as though it's coming right at you. But at the last minute, it would curve away from you and go right over the plate and a strike. If you were a left-hand uh, batter, then uh, it would seem like it's uh, way out away from you and you never would bat at it or swing at it. But at the last minute, it would come in right over the plate, strike. Uh, Sam, uh, I don't know, it was after he got out of school or uh, before he graduated from high school, but somewhere in time, Sam went to work at uh, a place called Helena Chemical Company in West Helena, Arkansas. And he saved his money. He worked hard and saved his money, and he purchased a Cadillac Eldorado, one of the beautifulest, best cars uh, in West Helena and Helena, and he started to dress like Superfly. I'm talking about to the Mac, the stacked heel, the, the long uh, top, uh, and, 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 and it, was a, it would be the pants would match the top and chain and everything. He dressed like Superfly to the Max. And a lot of times, especially when we're going to church, Christians uh, lack confidence uh, with God and will also lack confidence with God's people. So we try to, to pretend some, to be somebody that we are not, like Sam did. He, he just marveled that he would go downtown on Friday and Saturday night, park his uh, Cadillac Eldorado and lean on the hood and people would just pass by and admire him and his Cadillac and his clothes and everything. He just eat it up. But Sam was a small person. He was small in statue. And he tried to compensate by pretending he would try to get people to look at the clothes and the automobile instead of looking at his statue. A lot of times we try to do just the same thing. Part of the torment that fear generates is the constant worry how uh, much do others really know about me? But when we have confidence with God, that fear is gone and we can face both God and our fellow man without worry. I'm often asked, uh, how many members do you have of the church that you pastor? Now, as a new and younger pastor some years ago, I learned from being around other pastors to inflate the numbers. The more I've matured over the years, the more I've learned to be honest about it. And, and as the Indian did, I feel good about it. If I'm uh, right with the Lord, then everything should be right between me and his people. An immature Christian who is not growing in uh, his love for God may think that he has to impress others with his spirituality. And the amazing thing about it is that we don't have a clue of how others see us and how ineffective our pretending might be. We go around acting like we're all holy, we got all of the right words, we dress the way we think we should dress, and we don't have a clue that the people are looking at the real us. That's why I preached a bunch of sermons last year titled, Lord, Show Me Me. Now, uh, when we go around pretending and don't realize uh, how others truly see us, 
This mistake turns us into a liar. We are professing something that we are not really practicing, and we are playing a role instead of living a life. Maybe one of the best examples of this sin is seen in the experience of Ananias and Sapphira found in Acts chapter 5. For them to miss the lesson on sharing is to not love God enough to share what God has shared or given to them. And on top of that, not to share with the other believers was to completely miss the point. They sold a piece of property and brought part of the money to the Lord, but they gave the impression that they were bringing all of the money. They, had, they, they were not being honest. The sin of this couple was not taking money from God. Uh, Peter made it clear in Acts chapter 5 verse 4 that the the disposal of the money, they could do with the money whatever they chose. Acts chapter 5 verse 4 says, while it remains unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have, not, you, you have not lied to men, but to God. Now, their sin was hypocrisy. They were trying to make people think that they were more generous and spiritual than they really were. Pretending is one of the favorite activities of little children, but it is definitely not a mark of maturity in adults. Adults must know themselves and be themselves and therefore fulfilling the purpose for which Christ saved them. Their lives must be marked by honesty. Spiritual honesty uh, brings peace and power to the person who practices it. That person does not have to keep a record of the lies that he told. He is not using his energy to cover it up because his lies is his, his because his lives are uh, is open. Uh, honesty uh, is an open honesty to the father. He can live in honesty with other people. Our lives should be an open honesty to our heavenly father. And therefore we can live in honesty to others. Love and truth go together because we know that God loves us and accepts us even with all of our faults. We uh, are not trying to impress others. There is nothing that we can do to cause God to love us any more or any less. All we can do is to believe in Jesus Christ. We love God and therefore we love our fellow Christian. Confidence and honesty towards God and with others are two marks of maturity that are bound to show up when our love for God is being perfected. It's my business to spend my time living in honesty. And when God is pleased with my life of honesty, then others will appreciate my honest living. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 says, when a man man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Romans 8 and 31 says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then Matthew chapter 26, verse 14 through 26 says, Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him, speaking of Jesus, over to you? 
and they paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. When we assist the enemies of Jesus, it's because of dishonesty in our hearts. One of the simplest descriptions of honesty is found in the statement, do not expect God to cover what you are not willing to uncover. In other words, do not expect God to cover sins that we are unwilling to uncover or to admit. Honesty is the best way to begin and end a conversation with God. Honesty begins with admitting the truth about our sins. And when we uncover our sins, then God will cover them beneath the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood that was shed on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary, where Jesus hung, bled, and died for our sins. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, early in the morning, he rose from the tomb, the grave, with all power in his hand. Power to give us the ability to walk and to live lives of honesty. Remember the psalmist said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, and I might add unspeakable joy, comes in the morning. Uh, so if we are growing and God's love is being perfected in us, then it will show up in honest living from us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Take our, we ask that you would uh, just give us the power to live lives of honesty. We realize that Nothing fruitful can be done without you. So we ask that you would give the increase to the words that have been shared today and help us to uh, become people of honesty and integrity and help us to realize that we don't have to pretend because we are somebody already. We are your children. We are heirs of yours, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we are a royal priesthood, a peculiar treasure to you. And that makes us more than enough in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, don't forget to mask up, to practice social distancing, wash our hands often. And my prayer to God for all of us is that he will keep us, lead us, and use us in his service daily. And with that, I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye-bye.